what weird things happen during sex that nobody warns you about. When he keeps rubbing and thinks he has the clit, but it's not. So you try to reposition your body differently against his hand, or rub it yourself, attempt to guide him there. But he keeps rubbing your pubic bone raw anyway, until you give up and just get on top. How having sex, like they do in porno movies is actually quite physically exhausting, and doesn't feel very good. I think Ron Jeremy once said, if it looks bad, it feels good. If it looks good, it feels bad. All those crazy positions aren't to enhance the pleasure, they are to get better camera angles. Also, sex can last too long and those marathon sessions aren't necessarily a good thing. I've had a few sessions that lasted multiple hours, and it wasn't all that much fun for either of us towards the end. She dries up, we both get tired, etc etc. Finally, cuddling can be awkward, because you'll be trying to figure out where to put that one arm without your partner cutting the circulation off. I'm a woman with long hair and poor eyesight, so I always have to plait my hair back, learned that early on, and if I want to see anything I have to have my contacts in. When people said you had to prepare for sex, this was not what I had in mind. Your mind wanders. Like, you'll be trying to enjoy what's going on, and you'll know damn well that you have been wanting this to happen for a while, and you'll still have random one-off thoughts. It can take some self-discipline to stay in the moment, especially since not everything you're doing is necessarily what's best for you. Reapplying lube and then doing the old rodeo cowboy hand gesture, because you can't find the towel. So you just kinda keep your hand elevated, like you're afraid to ask Ms. Lang a question in 8th grade. If she gets overstimulated and either starts to cry, faint, or laugh uncontrollably. Personal experiences, when my girlfriend was grinding, and she came and began laughing hysterically, made me feel a little bad and uncomfortable, but she explained it to me. When you are a foot taller than your S slash O, and lining up is difficult. Just when she's getting close, my tongue cramps up. Some toilet paper leaves clitty litter. Sometimes, even if a woman is really turned on, she doesn't get wet. Sometimes you lose your spatial awareness. Partner and I were having a grand old time. Our lost sense of the bed dimensions, king. We were all over the place. Then I fell off the bed, ass over elbows onto my head, and farted upon impact. I was embarrassed. He got me an ice pack for the knot on my head. We've been married 17 years now, and still laugh about it. Be safe kids. <coughs> Flopping and slapping noises as your bodies meet. <coughs> when you could go all night, but she thinks you're about to come, and says don't come yet but just hearing. That makes you come. The apology later is the weird part. <coughs> Long sex does not necessarily mean good sex. For one, the girl can get sore, especially if the guy is big. It can also get boring if it goes on too long. It's all about finding the sweet spot, timing wise. I think it's been knocked into the heads of too many guys that the ideal is lasting for hours. For some women, I'm sure they love that. Others, not so much. Queefs, curious pets, spontaneous genital malfunction, all genders, the dreaded taint smash, muscle cramps, Falling out of rhythm, flesh farts, when two particularly well-fitting sweaty areas match up, and there's a little air in between, and it escapes, real farts, short and accidental MMA matches, I've taken an elbow to the eye socket, and the sentence I don't bend that way, that's all I can think of off the top of my head. Some people can't do two physical things at once, so they might be able to kiss, but once having sex they're bashing teeth. Sticking tongue out too far, rotating the head the wrong way. Just wrong. It's like they can't coordinate two types of bodily movement at once. You're not always gonna have sex with someone right out of the shower. Sometimes it's in the moment, and it doesn't always smell, let's say, awesome. Sometimes, hypothetically, the girl could be on top riding, and you could wind up for a playful slap on the ass and accidentally slap yourself directly in the balls causing great pain for one party and uproarious laughter for the other pretty much derailing the whole thing. I wouldn't know anything about this, but it uh, happened to a friend of mine. <coughs> hip cramps. Basically when your legs are spread too wide for too long and your hip flexor becomes a traitor requiring your leg to be straight, or you'll be in too much pain for enjoyment. 
Even worse when it's both of your hip flexors cramping at the same time. My mouth dries up to the point when I swallow it sticks and I choke and have to stop and get a drink. I guess from heavy breathing moaning and panting or getting so wound up from him I almost pass out. Blurry vision afterwards. Some people are absolutely amazing, sexy wonderful people, but you just don't enjoy sex with each other. Sometimes it's libido differences and sometimes it's just certain things don't do it for you. I dated someone who had a high sex drive like me, but she loved teasing. I don't mind it sparingly but literally every time she'd deliberately stop before I was finished as she got off on me being frustrated and wanting her more. Something like that just won't work out if you don't also enjoy that. But for her normal sex didn't do it for her so, even though we had great chemistry we would never see eye to eye in the bedroom. Sheets come off. Mattresses slide. Blankets start to bunch up, no matter how flat they lied. Pillows nowhere near the two of you will get launched. Things on the headboard are gonna fall over just watch. Sex will turn a bed that is perfectly made into one that just hosted a slumber party with a big sweat spot down the middle. Her legs might start vibrating at an alarming rate. I thought she was having a seizure and panicked, but don't be dumb like me. Apparently some girls do that when they're about to orgasm. A latex allergy makes things interesting for me. I have to always prepare and bring latex free condoms if sex will be a possibility. It's a little awkward when a guy goes for a condom and I have to give him the briefing on what's up and go for mine instead. And you can't really predict if it's a good fit for him. Fun stuff. How wildly varied orgasms and time can be. Sometimes you can be extremely turned on go for it along and dribble at the end. Other times you're extremely turned on fire off fast and it's like you've got a hose. You've got those seconds rounds that fire off harder than the first. It just varies so damn much. The amount of stamina required and the significant value of general fitness. If someone had told me in school that gym class was mainly going to aid you in sexual contexts, I would have made a much greater effort. As a guy, trying not to come often feels like those many games where you have to keep a needle in the middle of a green zone while different factors try to push it left or right. You think you're about to finish? Better start counting prime numbers in your head to distract yourself. Nope, got too distracted, and now your erection is starting to go away. Now thrust harder to compensate, and you now inexplicably feel like you're going to orgasm while having only a semi-erect penis. Then to top it all off, sometimes you stop just a millisecond too late, and you get this pathetic 5% orgasm, where you feel virtually nothing, don't actually come, but your d*** has decided that the show is over, and retreats for winter. Then you have to try to explain what just happened to some poor girl who thinks she did something to instantaneously kill your erection without any hope of it returning. You can't just let all your body weight rest on your partner. So you hold your weight up and or have your knees out in an awkward fashion. It can be uncomfortable. This is more from the guy's perspective and missionary. That and farty sounds the vaginal makes. I've got a beard and inevitably stuff vaginas with my chin hair as I go down on her and finger at the same time. After she finishes and I back away it like pulling hair out of a drain and I can smell pee until I shower. Side story, sometimes I'll get home before I get a chance to shower and wonder why my dog is so kissy and lick why, then it clicks. I wink at my papa's a thanks for the reminder and head and shoulders the literal f out of my beard. Nobody warns you about how disappointing shower sex can be. One person is always cold. Water is a terrible lubricant. It can be really cramped and uncomfortable. It's super easy to slip and hurt yourself. A lot better to just have sex and then shower together afterwards. <laughs> Anal means poop. If when it happens and you see shit on your dick for the first time, don't freak out and handle it maturely. You should never make your partner run comfortable like that. A stealthy wipe with a wet towel and back at it without drawing any attention to what happened. Also, some girls can cry during sex. It's nothing to be overly alarmed about, but you should obviously stop to check if they're well. They probably are and just got a bit overloaded or overstimulated. Again, don't freak out. Finally, when you go down for oral, a stray pube will get in your mouth and then lodge itself in your throat and stay there for like half an hour. It sucks. 
There's nothing you can do. Toss away account. Words to live by. Take a before you fk. It was a long day and we were horny as fk. Every position had been fk. The magic hole simply couldn't get any wetter. 3 hours of licking, pumping, finger in, sucking, 699. I finally went for the finale. At this point she'd at least had 5 orgasms, went in for the final lick. After 7 years I have never seen my girlfriend orgasm like this. Holy shit. Right before the orgasm went in, I mounted right up and threw her legs over my shoulders and went to pound town to finish. And that's when it happened folks. I noticed this odd smell. Huh. What? Oh, whatever, I'm like 90% there. The smell gets worse. Uh oh. Did I fart and not realize it? No way. This is bad. It's too dark to see. She's in organismic heaven. Whatever. Big B A D D A A B O O O M. All done. I rolled over and that's when I realized it. She unknowingly sharted onto the towel. She squirts. So must towel up B for sex. And shart is an understatement. There was shit everywhere. The smell. And yet, somehow, she continued to lay there not moving an inch. Should I say something? Should I accidentally shart to make it okay? What the fuck do you do in this situation? My girlfriend just the bed. No, no, no. None of that folks. A nice little peck on the cheek and run off to the shower. After the shower, she didn't move. WTF. She's on Facebook. WTF how does she not notice? I went out into the kitchen and made food, even though I was super tired. After about 15 minutes she finally got up and went into the shower. The towel was thrown into the shower and left a day or so before disappearing. Nothing was ever said. Never once mentioned. Folks nothing can prepare you for this. When you're going down on a girl, when you have a cold and a beard, and it's taking a while, so your face is completely covered in your own saliva and her wetness, and then your runny nose joins the party, and you're drowning in this giant pool of fluid smoothie, and it's kind of shooting back up your nose, and you can't breath, but she's close, so you know there's no way you can stop, and your jaw and tongue are dead. So she comes, are your damn near slipping into unconsciousness, and gasping for air. Then you have to go wash everything out of your beard, because you look like you just got swirlied.